Hey guys, welcome back to our channel, as you seen in the thumbnail, in this video we are gonna see. What if Naruto secretly married with Tamari, this is part 2, and if you want more then please leave a like, share and subscribe. Let's get in the video. Uzumaki Residence. Inside the house that now belongs to Naruto Uzumaki and Tamari no Sabaku you could hear laughing a giggling coming from the kitchen, as the two blondes were enjoying each other's company, as they were cooking anything that came to mind, and getting the other dirty with some of the ingredients along the way. After hours of cooking up food and eating it, the two blondes were on the floor covered in flour laughing at the other. Eventually the two calmed down before looking at each and blushing a little. His eyes are so blue. Tamari thought to herself. Her eyes reminded the forests around our home. He thought. Again, neither one knew what was happening, but Naruto cupped Tamari's cheek with his right palm before they slowly and sensually joined their lips. Naruto used his body to softly push Tamari on her back as he hovered above her keeping their lips locked. Tamari's arms came up wrapping themselves around his neck bringing her future husband closer, not wanting to let go. She let her hands roam down his back feeling his muscles and getting more into the kiss, and their tongues began a battle of dominance. As much as Tamari has come off tough, in this moment she didn't care about winning. In this very moment she wanted to be put in her place by the young man above her. So she quickly put her hand on his chest pushing him off before straddling his lap and diving into his neck and finding a sensitive spot right behind his ear. She began licking it getting him gasp in pleasure and surprise. Naruto's hands found their way to her plump rear, and he squeezed it getting her to moan, as she moved away from his neck to look Naruto in the eyes. She was blushing again seeing that her seduction was working. She dove in once more, this time reconnecting their lips and their passion for each other, burning brighter than before. Naruto's grip on Tamari's ass tightened as she cupped his face not wanting to break their connection. As much enjoyment as Tamari was getting out of it she wanted something more, and she kept repeating that thought to herself. Come on Naruto, put me in my place damn it. Flip me over and show me who's in charge here. After 30 seconds of still having their lips dance with one another, Tamari decided to kick it up a notch and began grinding her ass on his crotch to wake up his cock, hoping it also triggered something in him. Luckily for Tamari something did wake up in him. As Tamari picked up the pace and grinding her hips back and forth, Naruto used his strength to stop her and flipped her over before they vanished and reappeared on the master bed. Feeling the soft mattress beneath her woke up something within Tamari as she began undressing Naruto starting with his muscle shirt before pushing him off so she could take off her shirt. Shorts and bra, but that was all she could remove because Naruto pounced on her again sucking her neck while his left hand palmed her breast and his right hand was secure on her thigh. Tamari was gone, she could no longer properly think. She was on the receiving end of so much pleasure she thought she may die of it. Naruto moved down just a little to where his face was hovering over her breasts as he looked at her with animalistic eyes and waited. Once she came down from her pleasure high and looked at him, she knew she was screwed. He went on the offensive and latched his mouth to her nipple and began sucking on it while his tongue danced with it flicking it around. Occasionally his teeth would lightly nibble on it getting her to moan out loud. Naruto. Fuck. Even though she already told him that it wasn't the time to have sex and become one she desperately wanted to go back on those words and let him have his way with her. She was so close to the point of no return that if Naruto said to get on all fours, she just might actually do it without hesitation. Naruto switched breasts doing the same thing to this one. Once Naruto took a small break Tamari used this opportunity to flip the over and she now straddled him once again. Tamari upped the ante by stripping him of his shorts and leaving his boxers on. She could clearly see his cock was at full strength, ready to burst through, but she didn't entertain the idea of bringing it out because she knew that was the line of no return. Instead she sat on him her panty-clad pussy on top of his boxer-covered cock. Damari placed her hands on his chest and began to slowly grind her hips back and forth. As she did this her blush deepened and her pussy became extremely wet, she was ready to get fucked by his monster. The only thing stopping that from happening was her resolve. Tamari brought her lips down once more to meet Naruto's, and this time it was sensually and loving the way they kissed. It was still just as passionate as their other kisses the only difference is, they didn't show it. They didn't need to though, they could feel the passion being passed from one to another through the connection at their lips. Damari pulled back smiling softly at the blonde she has now fully fallen for. And Naruto. She started getting his eyes to soften from their animalistic look. I I think no I know, I now know that I love you completely Naruto Uzumaki, and I'll always be here for you, and I'll always fight by your side until my dying breath. I love you dummy. She said with a smile that held more emotions than Naruto could read. Hearing her revelation made his eyes go wide. For the first time in his life he heard a woman, a beautiful one at that finally say that she truly loved him. This was what he's wanted for so long, to feel a woman's love and care. He was now feeling it for the first time in his conscious life. 
Naruto smiled back her, you know I think I too have finally succumbed to you Tamari. I've fallen in love with you so much faster than I could have guessed. You've got me to finally let me be me without fearing judgment, and for that I will always love you even in death, and I will always be here to support you and fight by your side. I love you my desert lily. But those last words set a fire lit back up in Tamari, as she kissed him with ferocity once more, and began grinding her hips hard and fast, with one goal in mind, to soak his boxers with her coom. Since Naruto's cock was so wide Tamari's pussy was perfectly sitting on top of it as she practically jerked him off through his boxers with her grinding. The two were moaning in their kiss until they had to separate to get some air. Once Naruto got his lungs filled with air again, he began to buck his hips to her rhythm and began smacking her ass getting incredibly loud pops. Aying, fuck Naruto. Keep doing that baby. Keep smacking my big ass. I know you enjoy it, don't ya? She moaned out as her ass was starting to have red handprints appear on it. Why yes, I love that you have a big ass Tamari. Naruto replied as he was loving this wild side of Tamari. Tamari kept going until her clit became exposed and began rubbing on her thong, sending her sense of pleasure through the roof. Oh fuck. I'm close Nordo. I'm so close. I'm gonna fucking coom all over you. Tamari screamed approaching the cliff of relief. Then do it. Coom all over me Tamari. I want to see you coom. Naruto yelled back as both blondes increased the speed of their grinding bucking until Tamari pushed her hips as far forward as she could. Moved the part of the thong covering her pussy out of the way and came all over Naruto like she said she would. Her love juices squirting out of her as she screamed in absolute pleasure as she was being taken to cloud 9. I'm fucking cooming Naruto. With her other free hand, she furiously rubbed her clit getting her juices to go everywhere. Oh, shit it won't stop. I can't stop cooming Naruto. Fuck me. After 20 seconds of cooming Tamari finally came down from her high and rolled off of her lover panting like a dog. Once she got her breathing under better control, she tried to put words together to form sentences, but her brain was still feeling that orgasm. I I I've never I've never coom like that Naruto. That's that's the best orgasm I've ever had. Why you gave me the best orgasm I've ever had. She turned to see Naruto still shocked at the fact that she actually covered him in her coom. What's wrong sweetie? She asked. Then nothing, I just didn't think you actually meant you were gonna cover me in your coom. He, sorry. To be honest I wasn't expecting to coom that much, but I did thanks to you being a wonderful lover and partner. She said scooching over to him and turning his head to look at her as she captured his lips once more. Thank you Naruto. Thank you for putting up with me and accepting me into your home and more importantly, into your life. I don't know how I could ever start to repay you. You can start by always sticking by my side. He replied smiling softly. I think I can work something out. She replied getting a smile out of him for her smartest remark. Good, I'm gonna need you a lot in the future, especially once we start our own family. We both know I can't do it alone. He said. You won't have to dummy. I love you Naruto. She said pecking his lips before getting under the sheets with him and snuggling up to him. I love you too Tamari. Naruto replied softly as he moved his head to kiss the top of hers, which made her smile, not that he saw. The two soon drifted off to sleep embracing one another, happy that they were now truly feeling love from the opposite gender, something they both missed out on during their rough upbringings. Elsewhere in Konoha, nighttime. Soon a day was busy as usual finishing up paperwork much to her displeasure, but a nice form of distraction was headed her way. Out on the streets Jiraiya was headed to the Hokage Tower to visit his teammate and direct commander. The nightlife in Konoha was easily one of the best in world, and Jiraiya had a feeling that soon a day could use a night out on the town. As Jiraiya entered the building he noticed it was empty, Shizune had clearly gone home to turn in for the night, and if she was gone, then that means the only person who was left in the building is his busty teammate. As Jiraiya made the journey upstairs, he began reminiscing about his time as a Jonin team leader, getting missions from the Hokage, who was his sensei. It brought a smile on his face. He missed Minato and Kishina dearly since they were like his own children in his eyes, but he was happy to know that they entrusted Naruto's care to him. He did his absolute best to make Naruto into a man that both of his parents would be proud of, especially Kishina. Sigh I miss those two. He said to himself as he finally approached the door to Tsuna Day's office. Normally he was just barge in or come through the window, but something was telling him to be more polite and cordial. With that he knocked twice and waited. Inside Tsuna Day's office. Knock knock. Uh. Who the hell could that be? Tsuna Day said to herself, come in. She said out loud and she was surprised to see her teammate being so polite about his entrance. Jiraiya. I'm surprised that was you. Normally you just barge in or come through the window. She said. Well I guess that saying about an old dog learning new tricks isn't that valid. He said chuckling a little at his witty remark. Soon a day couldn't help but laugh a little and relax. If there was one thing about Jiraiya she loved it was his wittiness. 
For her that was something she wants a man to have because being witty can always defuse a tense situation, and with her current position as Hokage she was always tense, plus who doesn't want a man that can make you laugh. Tsuna Day certainly has never heard a woman complain about a man making them laugh. What can I do for you Jiraiya? She asked as she resumed her work. How long you been working on this junk? He asked looking at her with a smile. Closing in on 16 hours. She replied. Well then I think that calls for a break. Jiraiya said extending his hand to her. I can't Jiraiya you know that. I've still got three stacks of paperwork to get through. She said with a depressed look. And you'll be here until sunrise doing them, pass out for pretty much the entire day tomorrow, and then be forced to do two days of paperwork in one day. Come on, just leave a clone here to do that garbage and let's go. You need a break soon a day. Jiraiya I've barely been in this position I can't just. That's exactly why you need to take a break, why burn yourself out so early in your tenure. It's not like we have the sixth Okage waiting for you to pass on the title. Just leave a clone to do the work and let's get out of here. He said. Wait. She said. What? That's it. How the hell did I not think of it? Tsuna Day yelled out banging her head on the wall. Stupid, stupid, stupid. She said. Um, what the hell are you doing? The Toad Sage asked. I'm a complete idiot for not thinking of that solution earlier. No wonder Uncle Toby was able to come home during the day and walk around the village, he left his shadow clones to do the work. Thank you so much Jiraiya. She said. Don't thank me, thank Naruto it was his idea. He said he was gonna tell Saratobi sensei once he became a chunin, but that never happened, so he was going to let you sweat out the first few months before telling you. Jiraiya said. That little punk. Soon the day snapped when I get my hands on him, I'm gonna strangle him to death, bring him back, then beat him to a pulp. She growled out. You might have a problem with that. The sage replied. How so? Damari, seems like those two have worked things out and are smooth sailing. D that's great. Is it genuine or for the mission type of smooth sailing? She asked. I'll tell you on one condition. Jiraiya said. It better not be perverted. She huffed. Geez what do you take me for a pervert? He nonchalantly replied. Well yeah. You are the self-proclaimed super pervert. It was a joke relax. He replied putting his hands up. Just tell me the condition. She said impatiently. Leave a clone here to do the rest of the work and come enjoy the nightlife our home offers with me. Deal? He asked. Tsuna Day smiled hearing that it wasn't anything perverted at all, a mere request to get her out of her office to relax and enjoy life as a human. You got yourself a deal pervert. She replied smiling and taking his hand. Wow what a creative nickname Tsuna Day. He grumbled as he helped her up while getting her to giggle a little. I haven't heard her giggle like that in years. Don't screw this up Jiraiya. He mentally told himself. For once in his life Jiraiya kept his perverted tendencies to himself as he just tried his best to get his teammate to relax a little and not get so stressed out this early in her tenure. So, what's your game Jiraiya? Tsuna Day asked as they settled into a booth at a bar. Aim? He asked. Yeah, how are you gonna go about trying to get a sneak at my cleavage or getting in my pants? Tsuna Day asked swigging down some sake. You have no faith in me to be decent do you? He said. Well one look at your track record would tell the tale. She replied smirking. Well if you must know my plan is to get you out of the office and relax a little. We both know that job isn't anything to stress over. Jiraiya said sipping on some of his sake. Ain't that the truth? Tsuna Day replied smiling back at her friend. So, how are you settling in with the job and being back home? He asked. Oh, you know, everyone is a kiss ass trying to get on my good side because of my family and the title. She said while sighing. So, the usual I see haha. Jiraiya laughed out. Pretty much. The busty blonde replied. Well it's good to have you home soon a day. He said sipping some more alcohol before ordering some bourbon whiskey for the two of them. So, tell me Jiraiya, what have you been up to during your travels? She asked. Well I've come across an organization called the Akatsuki, and it seems they're hunting. He said taking a few sips of bourbon this time, and he could feel it burn as it slid down his throat. Hunting what exactly? Tsuna Day asked intrigued. Hailed beasts. Jiraiya said after pausing for a moment to make sure he wanted to really tell Tsuna Day the danger their village is in. So that means yeah, Naruto is going to be their target very soon. I'm estimating that they won't really make any move on the Jinchurikis for about three to three and a half more years, in that time, I'm going to take Naruto on a training trip to get him prepared. Tsuna Day was surprised hearing the news. She knew there were people who didn't like Naruto, but this was different, this was a group of highly ranked criminals searching out specific people with incredible power trapped within them. Make sure you protect the brat at all costs. I can't lose another. She said quietly. I know Tsuna Day. It's been many years since they passed hasn't it? 
he said looking at the Hokage who was staring at her drink on the table. Yeah, and I still couldn't save them. She spat out. Come on Tsunade. Are you seriously still hung up on that? It's been over 20 years and you did your absolute best Tsunade, everyone knows you did your best. No one thinks you didn't try. Jiraiya said raising his voice and getting his arms into it. Just shut up. She replied with venom. No. He snapped back looking her dead in the eyes. She looked up and locked her gaze with his, and a silent battle of wills began. Jiraiya surprised Tsunade by grabbing her hand and shunshined out of the bar to their old training ground when they were much younger and on a team. The hell is your problem he yelled at her. My problem what the hell is wrong with you? You know damn well how I am with that subject and you just throw it in my face. It's time to move on Tsunade. Do you honestly think Nawaki and Dan are happy seeing you still mourning over them? They would want you to move on, you've accomplished the dream they always wanted, and you've become an even better medical ninja. It's time to mob Jiraiya yelled back before Tsunade clocked him in the jaw with her right fist sending him into a tree. Just drop it you idiot. Tsunade said pissed off. I won't, I won't drop it until you come to terms with everything. Jiraiya said wiping the blood off of his lips and popping his jaw back in place. Tsunade charged in and began an onslaught of punches. Jiraiya didn't defend himself he knew she needed to blow off some steam. Jiraiya reinforced his body with chakra to soften the blows, but he could still feel her punches clearly, and he knew he was going to have serious damage. Tsunade continued her onslaught punching away at Jiraiya while tears were streaming down her face, and she was yelling at him and calling him names. Not once did Jiraiya retaliate, he let her get out of frustration. Eventually she stopped throwing punches and just balled her eyes into his chest while her fists were still balled up. You're such an asshole. After they died you left me, you left me and Arachimaru left, and now Sensei is gone. Everyone just leaves me. She cried out. If I left you then why am I here right now? He asked with a bloody smile with soft eyes. Look at me Tsunade. Jiraiya said. She slowly tilted her head up and saw just how bloody she made Jiraiya from her punches. She was horrified that she actually dealt out this much damage to the one person in her life that still loved her in some manner. I'm so sorry Jiraiya. I I didn't mean to Tsunade started before Jiraiya silenced her by crashing his lips to hers. Tsunade's eyes went wide and she initially wanted to push him away, but a part of her just melted feeling a man's touch again. After a few seconds Jiraiya broke the kiss and brushed her hair and cupped her chin and made sure she held eye contact with him. I'm always going to be here for you Tsunade. I'm not going anywhere. He said before turning and coughing up some blood and dropping to his knees feeling weak. Jiraiya. Tsunade exclaimed trying her best to hold him up, but his heavy body just fell to the earth. Damn, just hold still I'll fix you up. She said as she began healing him. Jiraiya had a smile on his face, seeing Tsunade finally calm down and healing his injuries. I can't believe after all this time that you still pack an incredible punch. The sage quietly said. Just shut up, talking isn't going to help you heal pervert. She responded sternly but smiled at his compliment when he relaxed and let her go to work. Once Tsunade finished healing her teammate she helped him up and slung his arm over her shoulders. Just like old times eh? Jiraiya said smirking. Yeah, just like old times. Tsunade replied with a soft smile. They walked in silence for a while before Tsunade broke it, I'm sorry Jiraiya. She said looking down at the ground. You don't need to apologize. I struck a nerve and you responded. I'm just glad you didn't kill me. He joked. Seriously Jiraiya I'm sorry. You're completely right. It's time I move on. She said and they both stopped walked as Jiraiya straightened up and looked at her. So, what is that going to entail? Jiraiya asked with a toothy grin. Maybe finding a man to share my life with and settle down. She said. Oh really? Really? She replied with a grin. They eventually made it to Tsunade's home where they let the conversation end. Thank you Jiraiya. Tsunade said smiling softly at him. Of course, Tsunade. Jiraiya said grinning, I'll see you in the morning. He said turning to leave, and Tsunade just watched his back not moving, a smile graced her lips. Hey Jiraiya. She called out and he turned to her with his eyebrow raised. Yeah. What's up? I think you forgot something. Tsunade said. Jiraiya was completely lost, confusion plastered on his face. I did. He asked as he checked his person, but he saw he had everything on him. I don't know what you mean, but I've got everything I need. You sure you didn't hit your head? Tsunade had a sly smirk on her face, and she used her index finger and told him to come to her. Jiraiya was still confused and walked up to the busty blonde, and he towered over her. So, what did I forget? He asked. Just this. Tsunade said as she pulled him down for a kiss and shot her tongue into his mouth and easily won with the element of surprise on her side. Jiraiya responded by grabbing her plump ass and picking her up and slamming her back against the front door. 
Soon Ade moaned into the kiss as she wrapped her strong legs around his broad waist as her fingers ran through his hair. After a minute of locking lips and fighting for dominance, Soon Ade broke the kiss, but Jurea still held her up with ease. That's all you get for now. Keep being the way you are around me like you were tonight, you know not being a pervert, and you just might get some more she said as Jurea let her stand on her own. Is that right? He replied smirking. Yep, now go get some rest and stay out of trouble unless you want the doctor to beat your ass some more. She jokingly replied. Yes ma'am. He said turning and walking away, but soon a day got the last laugh as she pinched his ass getting a yelp from him, and she died laughing as Jurea was blushing up a storm. I'm gonna get you back for that you know. He said. If you think you can handle all of this then go right ahead, I'm not gonna stop you. She said as she turned and swayed her hips as she walked in her home and closed the door. Jurea just stood there not sure if he was dreaming, but he soon found out that what just transpired was indeed real. Not too bad, I think I'll follow her orders just to get some more of that. She's a damn good kisser and an even better tease. He mused as he walked home with a big smile on his face. Hanoha Hospital, Nighttime. Sazke was on the roof looking out on the village as four individuals came up on the roof with him. My, my what a pitiful sight you are Sazke Che. A pale teen with lipstick on said. Sazke spun around and still with a relaxed posture he asked, who the hell are you? We're Rachimaru's personal bodyguard unit, the Sound 4. The pale teen replied. At lost losers, I have no business with weaklings like you. He said turning back around. Weakling huh, then you won't mind if I wipe the floor with your sorry ass. A red-haired girl snapped back. TCH, you're nothing but garbage. The Achiha replied not even looking back at her. Why you little? She spat before charging in. Sazke wasn't intimidated and turned around to see a fist coming in at full speed, right before he got clocked in the face and sent over the roof into a tree on the hospital grounds. Sazke got up and wiped the blood from his lips and smirked. Lucky shot you bitch. The redhead jumped down and was ready to keep fighting, but the pale teen interrupted. Hang on Teaya, we still need him in one piece. If that's all you got then I'm gonna wipe the floor with all of you. Sazke said activating his Sharingan. So, you're gonna fight us with your Sharingan. It's about time. The girl responded. As Sazke charged in he thought he was going to have an advantage, but all four activated their curse mark and the fight was over before it began. Saz K got beaten around and bloodied up a little before being contained in wire. You see how weak you are Achiha, you even had your Sharingan, and you still couldn't beat us. Lucky for you Lord Orochimaru has taken a liking to you and would like to offer you a chance to gain power like ours, power, so you can beat your brother Itachi. So, what do you say? The pale teen asked. Saz K stayed silent, he was in shock and anger that he lost so badly to these guys. They had power that was beyond his Sharingan and it angered him to no end. Sazuke didn't reply, he was still trying to process everything. We'll give you some time to think about it. We'll be back in two nights a little bit outside the village, if you decide to join us, you better make sure no one knows otherwise we'll kill you. The pale teen said with emotionless eyes. They soon vanished leaving Sazuke to think about the proposition. Sazuke stayed outside by the tree for hours until he decided to go back inside, grab his clothes and leave the hospital on his own accord. Next day Yuzumaki house. Naruto and Tamari woke up together and both just smiled and thinking how lucky they ended up, even if things started out horribly, they both made the effort to turn things around and they got the ship going in the right direction in no time. Tamari was feeling extra good this morning after their makeout session and orgasm she had yesterday, so she hopped on Naruto straddling his waist with a big grin on her face. So what you got planned for today? She asked. As soon as she hopped on him, Naruto put his hands right where her waist dips in and squeezed slightly, getting Tamari to blush and let out a soft moan. Well I was going to check to see if my team is ready to get back to training, since Sazuke should be good to go soon. Oh, and I wanted to check in on Lee and see how he's doing, I heard he got done with surgery the second day we came back with Bachan. What about you? He asked. MMM, I hope you didn't forget about our date Foxy-kun. She teased. Naruto blushed at the nickname, but realized it did slip his mind, yesterday he was having so much fun with Tamari that he totally forgot about it. Um, yeah, after I check in with Lee, I'll take you out tonight. Anything in specific you're feeling? I'll leave it up to you. She said getting off of him then the bed as she took her thong off while showing off her ass and giving Naruto a peek at her pussy. When it came to teasing, Tamari seemed to be a master at it and Naruto was definitely not going to complain. Damari held her thong by a fingertip and let it fall to the floor as she walked with a nice sway in her hips to the closet. Naruto couldn't help but get hard and make a tent out of the sheets, seeing her big ass and hips move so hypnotically. Once she got to the door, she turned to look over her right shoulder at him and noticed the tent he made, and she blushed as she imagined getting railed by him. 
I can't wait to make him mine, but I need to wait a little bit longer. She gave Naruto an extra present by bending her body over and spreading her ass apart so he could get a clear view of her asshole and pussy. Once again Naruto's face became red like a tomato, so Tamari gave him the knockout punch by spreading her legs, and she began rubbing her pussy while looking at him and moaning. Her eyes held a look that said she wanted to be bent over the sink and fucked to hell. After a little while of rubbing herself she made Naruto have a nosebleed by inserting her middle and ring finger into her pussy mmmm, Naruto I need you baby. I need that big cock of yours shoved all the way in my wet pussy baby. That was it, Naruto had the biggest nosebleed and passed out on the sheets with steam coming out his ears and his face still red as a tomato. Damari stood up giggling as she said, he's too easy to tease, but then again, that makes it more fun, knowing I can do this to him whenever I want. Damari got dressed while her finance was still passed out. She decided to go with a normal t-shirt and pulled the hem up under her bust and tied it in the back to show off her toned stomach and went with athletic shorts again. Just like the day before she woke up Naruto with the smell of her cooking and he came down to see her dancing and singing to herself again. It warmed his heart to know that she was getting comfortable with being around him. He came up behind her giving her a hug as he wrapped his arms around her protectively and she let out an erotic sigh as she felt his strong arms enclose her. She leaned her head back and whispered in his ear, hey there handsome, seems like you finally woke up. What took you so long? She teased. Naruto responded by turning her around and picking her up and holding her by the bottom of her thighs as she wrapped her arms around his neck and legs around his waist. Well this vixen kinda slowed me down earlier, she thought it would be funny to try and tease me. Try. I thought I did a pretty good job teasing you, considering you passed out with a bloody nose again foxy cun. She said smirking sexily. Shut up. He replied. Make me. She answered without missing a beat. So, Naruto did, he crashed his lips to hers while she responded, and the two began battle for dominance, but Tamari gave up and allowed him to wash her with love and ecstasy. When they broke the kiss, they looked at each other with nothing but love in their eyes, there was no lust, just love. You're really good at that you know. She said smiling dreamily. You're not half bad at teasing. He replied as he put her back on the floor. Well when you have the right man, it makes things fun. She said turning her attention back to the food on the stove. Is that right? Naruto replied as he cupped her breasts from behind as his chest met her back and his third leg was grinding into her crack. Damari moaned at the feeling of his dominant side coming out and he took the opportunity to capture her lips once more to suck out any air and leave her begging for more. When he broke away, she saw just how sexy he looked with his demeanor. Naruto backed away and smacked her ass hard getting another moan, but this one much louder as he went and sat at the table waiting for her to finish. Damn, him. He's so much better at teasing than he knows. Just one kiss and my breasts getting grabbed and I'm so ready to take him right on that table. Calm down Tamari, just a little more time, and then you can fuck him, just hang on a little longer. Okage office, same time as above section. Tsunade was in the office early after a nice night out and her teammate came in the office to see her. Well you seem to be in a good mood. Jiraiya said after walking in the office. Well I had a nice night. Tsunade replied playfully smirking. Jiraiya could only smile at his teammate, he hasn't seen her this happy in so many years, and it was nice to see her coming back to her old self. So, anything interesting going on around the village? He asked. Well Rock Lee is still recovering from surgery, Sasuke is recovery from his, and Kakashi got released a couple days ago. Other than that, I'm not sure anything major has happened. She replied resting her chin on her interlocked fingers. Well I guess a peaceful village is a happy village. Jiraiya said. Is that how that saying goes? She quipped. It does now. Jure replied, and the two shared a laugh before smiling. Up until lunchtime Tsunade worked diligently and managed to get her paperwork down to a few sheets and decided to leave a clone to finish it while she walked around the village and get lunch. I wonder what Jureya is up to. She thought as she walked down to the front and ended up running into Jureya. So, off to lunch are we, mind if I join? The tall sage asked. I'd like that. Soon a day replied and they began walking together, and most of the people who saw them thought nothing of it. To them it was just two teammates and friends having a good time and enjoying each other's company, others though loved to create their own stories and began the gossip of a possible relationship blooming. The two sand and went out for sashimi and yakitori and of course their drink of choice was sake. The two enjoyed each other's company and began reminiscing on some old times and laughed at the good times they had when they were younger. Thank you Jiraiya. Soon a day said as she placed her hand on his. Of course, Tsunade, in a way we are family. We're the only ones left from our team so we got have each other's backs don't we? He said smiling. Yeah. She replied getting lost in his charcoal eyes. 
The two paid for the meal and had a nice stroll back to her office, and if you looked close enough you could see Tsunade glowing. After a nice walk they finally went inside the office to keep talking to distract Tsunade from work a little longer. Thanks for the meal Jurea, it was nice to get out the office and not worry about paperwork. She said sitting on the edge of her desk. You know you've been thanking me a lot lately. He teased. Shut up. She said off to the side and blushing which made Jurea roar with laughter. He walked up to her and she spread her legs a little to let him get closer. I've needed this for so long. Thank you for not giving up on me. She said. I do it because I still love you Tsunade. I know you may not feel the same way as I do, but I still love you. He said. Then come and show me. She playfully challenged and Jurea accepted as he crashed his lips to hers and lifted her off the desk and held her tight. Tsunade pushed him off before making a new shadow clone to take over and she threw off her green Hayori before grabbing Jurea by his vest. What are you doing Tsunade? He asked. Isn't it obvious, I'm gonna be doing you in a second unless you have a complaint. I don't, but this is kinda sudden. I've denied my feelings for you for so long and I won't waste another second. She said right before pulling him down the vest and crashing his lips to hers and they teleported to her home and began making love to each other. If anyone was to walk by Tsunade's home, they would hear their leader moaning her lungs out and getting sent to cloud 9 by her teammate turned lover. By the time they finished Tsunade looked like a mess and Jurea had the biggest smile on his face. If you get me pregnant somehow you better help me take care of the kid. Of course I will, you don't have to worry about that, but what are the chances you actually get pregnant? Aren't we supposed to be past the age for us to get pregnant? Yeah, we are. I'm just saying that if by some chance I get pregnant, you better be there for our child. She said. I will, I promise Tsuhime. Jurea said pecking her on the forehead before she lifted her head up and snagged a kiss from him. Her Naruto and Jurea things were looking very good with the relationship they've started. Elsewhere in the village. I need to get stronger. Those lowly bastards beat me once with some weird power. I need what they have, I need Orochimaru to give me the power to kill Itachi. Underground. It seems that Ichiha boy is getting impatient and will be leaving us soon. Orochimaru is lucky I allowed his pathetic bodyguards in a second time. They barely did anything during their invasion, but I think they got the message across to Sasuke a second time. I leave him in your care now Orochimaru. An older man with a X-shaped scar on his chin thought in his lair. Now it's time to find a way to ruin the relationship between that Jinchuriki brat and his horse Suna bride. But Sasuke, night time. Sasuke was looking at a picture of Team 7 and then put the photo face down. This is goodbye Naruto. I need to get stronger and you along with everyone in this village is nothing but a hindrance to my mission. Sasuke left his apartment and met up with the sound for a day earlier than the deadline, if he was being offered some great power, he didn't want to waste a second on obtaining it, he wanted it now. North side of Kanoha Forest. Alright, take me to Orochimaru. Sasuke demanded and four figures showed themselves, all of them smirking. The wise choice Sasuke Ichiha, come we mustn't waste another second. The pale teen said. Lead the way. The Ichiha replied with pure fire and determination. Back in Kanoha at the same time. Naruto and Tamari were just finishing up getting ready as Naruto found a perfect restaurant for them. This place didn't care about who you were, as long as you had money to get in and buy the food, they would accept your business. Naruto was dressed in his welcome kimono and clogs, while Tamari decided to go with a sexy black dress that hugged her curves and bust, while leaving the back open. From the bottom of her ass down the floor the dress was much looser and hit her feet as she walked with her four one-half heels. Her hair was in its usual four pigtails, and when she came down the stairs, they were each blown away at the sight of their date. Damn she looks beautiful. He cleans up so damn well. They walked up to each other, and Tamari now had a height advantage on him with her heels, but it wasn't much since his clogs gave him an extra two. You ready handsome? She asked with one hand on his partially exposed chest. Definitely. He said smiling, still taking in her beauty as his right hand found its spot on the small of her back. You can go lower if you want. She whispered in his ear and pulled back smirking to see him blushing a little. I would, but I don't want people to get a look at that beautiful ass you're packing. I'll grab that but all I want when it's just the two of us, I won't let anyone else see that. He replied. Fair enough. She replied, and the two walked out hand in hand and prepared for their first date. When they got to the restaurant and got seated, ordered food and everything, they didn't really have much to talk about since they've pretty much told everything about themselves, so it was a fairly silent dinner, but it wasn't an awkward silence. They were okay just taking in the other and enjoying the company being presented, but Tamari being the tease she has decided to really take things up a notch. She pretended to accidentally drop her fork in the floor and began searching for it, but she could care less about the utensil, her prize was locked up in his slacks. 
When Naruto felt a hand on his crotch he froze and looked down to see Tamari's lust-filled eyes boring a hole through his crotch. Tamari what the hell are you doing he aggressively whispered. Shut up and act normal. I'm trying to do you a favor here. She replied as she unzipped his pants and reached in to finally pull out his python and get a good first look at. Hami this thing is huge. She thought to herself marveling at the masterpiece she's been craving for days now. Naruto tried his best to act normal and went back to eating his meal while his fiance began enjoying her meal. Thankfully they we had a booth in the back corner that had cloth on the table that extended all the way to the floor. Underneath Tamari began pumping his soft cock and it took no time for him to get hard at 9 inches. Holy shit he's huge. Tamari began her tease by kissing up and down his cock and licking extremely lightly around the head. She gave a kiss to the head before going back down to the base and she dragged her tongue all the way up and flicked her tongue when she got to the top. Oh I'm going to enjoy this. She said as she stretched her mouth open as wide as she could and took him into her orifice and just played with the head licking it and sucking it hard. Soon she took him deeper and deeper until she maxed out at the 7 inch mark. Naruto wasn't just long, he was thick so Tamari fit as much as she could before running out of room, but she wasn't going to back down. She didn't care what her current limit was, she was going to break through it and create a new one right now. For the next 15 minutes she just worked his cock and those 7 inches she could fit before she began forcing little by little the remaining inches down her throat. If you were to look at her throat you could see his cock moving her throat around as he entered and exited. Naruto was doing his absolute best up above to not look affected as he continued to put food in his mouth, but he couldn't ignore the absolute pleasure he was feeling below the table. Tamari knew exactly what to do with him and he became putty. He knew she was trying to get those last two inches down and decided to help her out by putting one hand on the back of her head and was lightly pushing her to go further. Tamari smirked underneath the table at the action, it meant he's completely gone and he can't think straight. She decided to finally just shove it down in one go and she was rewarded with Naruto's cock burying itself in her throat while her nose met his pelvis for the first time. Once she got her goal she smiled and began bobbing her head up and down as she beat back her gag reflex. After some time deep throating him she decided to play with his head again and used her two hands to help pump him as they twisted in opposite directions of each other. She could feel Naruto getting close to orgasm as he began tensing up and his cock began to twitch, but upon feeling it twitch she let go and took her mouth off his cock and returned to her seat and smirked at his face. Problem? She asked. Fuck you. Oh don't worry you will eventually. She replied with a sexy smirk. So you get to coom and I don't, is that it? He asked. Yup, better get used to it, because I certainly won't stop teasing you foxy cunt. You're such a bitch. Yeah, well I don't think you'd like me if I wasn't like this. She responded smoothly. Unfortunately I think I have to agree with you on that one. He said still out of it. I know. Just finish your damn food so I can make sure you finish what you started. Is that a threat? She asked. A promise. He replied with fire in his eyes. What did I just open up? She thought. She finished her food and they paid for the meal. It was a silent walk back home for them, and Tamari was wondering the whole time if he actually meant what he said. She found out when they got home. Naruto made good on his promise, because he never goes back on his word. Anoha Forest. Naruto you better not follow me, or I'll have no choice but to kill you. This is the end of our friendship. This is your son. The blonde said smiling. What? What do you mean my son? You mean after just that one time? He replied. That's kin to how sex works you idiot, you only need one time and unless you forgot you finished inside of me. Idiot. She responded clocking her lover in the head. I swear you can be so stupid sometimes. She grumbled. Normal timeline. After Naruto went home with Tamari and made good on his promise to her they slept peacefully, not knowing that Sasuke Uchiha has forsaken the village and is currently headed to Orochimaru. No one knew he left and no one was going to find out until the morning after he left. Next morning. Naruto and Tamari woke up together, and after Tamari teased him some more by bringing him right to the edge again with some morning head, they made their way downstairs in their usual morning attire. Tamari had on a black sports bra with shorts she stole from Naruto, and Naruto had on a different pair of shorts and nothing else. Their morning has become pretty routine. They'd cook and dance together while laughing and getting food on each other, before sharing a kiss or three. They'd eventually move to the table where they'd eat, but today was different. Naruto heard his name being called from the front gate of his home and went to see who it could be this early, and he found Shikamaru at the gates. Shikamaru? What are you doing here this early? He asked, and what's with the vest? Just got promoted five minutes ago to Chunin by Lady Tsunade, but that isn't important, Sakura was found knocked out on the street this morning. She says she ran into Sasuke last night and that he was leaving for Orochimaru. 
Lady Tsunade wants me to put a team together and use available genin that I think would be good for this mission. You're the first person that came in mind, we need to go now. He said. Alright, let me get my gear and I'll meet you at Choji's, I assume he's coming. Naruto replied in a serious manner. Yeah, I'll meet you there or at the gates. Added. Naruto said and turned to get ready. Everything okay Naruto? Tamari asked as he came in the house. Sasuke's left the village for Rachimaru, and Shikamaru is leading a retrieval team under Bachan's orders. He said as he went upstairs and got changed in 30 seconds and had everything he needed. He came back downstairs where Tamari was waiting with a worried look on her face. Wipe that look on your face, everything's gonna be okay. I'll bring him home. He said. I don't care about him. I'm worried about you, if he left for Rachimaru like you said, he's probably going to have a security detail with him. Promise me you'll be safe and you'll come back to me in one piece. She said. I promise to Mari. He said with a small smile on his face. The two shared a kiss like it might be the last time they'll get a chance to, and Naruto started walking out. Be safe dummy. She said. I will, I'll be back soon. I love you to Mari. I love you too Naruto. She said and with that her fiancé was gone. The Mari finished breakfast in silence and then got dressed in her normal attire before leaving the house to check in with Tsunade to see her full plan. By the time she got ready to leave the house Shikamaru had collected, Naruto, Choji, Kiba with Akamaru, and Niji. He laid out the plan and they soon got moving. Just as Tamari locked the gate to her home a member of the Anbu Black Ops appeared at her feet kneeling. Lady Tamari, Lady Hokage asks for your audience. She says it's urgent. Does it have to do with Sasuke leaving? She asked. Yes ma'am. Alright, I'll be there in a minute. She said and the Anbu left while Tamari ran to Tsunade's office. Tsunade's office. Tamari made it to her office, and she began getting debriefed of the situation. So Sasuke left for Rachimaru, and Sakura says she tried stopping him, but she got knocked out, and now Shikamaru is leading four genin to chance after them. That sums it up. Tsunade said. You know he most likely has a security detail that has at least Chunin level individuals and put together are probably Jonin level or higher right. Tamari said. You're worried about Naruto. The older blonde said. I can't help it, I've finally fallen in love with him, and I can't help but worry for him, he is going to be my husband soon, and eventually the father to our kids. It's my job to worry about him. She said. Don't worry. Naruto has a tendency to overcome obstacles that seem impossible. And besides we're talking about getting Sasuke back, Naruto won't stop until he's done that. Tsunade said calmly. Yes ma'am I understand. I'm saying to not worry Tamari. Tsunade started as she got up and walked up to the younger blonde. Just keep it under wraps, you're a shinobi, right now you need to act like it, and as a soon-to-be-married woman you need to have faith in your man to take care of himself. You're right. Is there anything I can do? She asked. Actually you can. It's the real reason I called you here. I need you to send a message to the hidden sand to your siblings. We have a mission for the three of you. Back up the Sasuke retrieval team and make sure our boys come home. Defeat this enemy with as much force as you need, even if you have to kill. Tsunade said. Yes ma'am. Tamari started before drawing blood and going through hand signs, summoning Jutsu. Tamari yelled out, and her weasel popped out of the smoke. Kamatari I need you to go to the sand and give a message to my brothers, then reverse summon them here. I understand, but you know reverse summoning can be dangerous. Thus do it, we don't have time for them to travel across the desert. Understood. Kamatari said and got the message form Tamari and left. Go ahead and prepare Tamari. Oh and you're officially a Chunin now Tamari, congrats. Tsunade said tossing her a vest. Thank you laddie. Tamari said bowing and left. Tamari changed out of her attire in favor of a new one she's been wanting to try out. No time like the present. She said as she got dressed put her fan on her back and had her two smaller ones sealed away in scrolls. Once Tamari checked over to make sure everything was in place she left and headed for the main gates. Tsuna. Amatari popped out of nowhere surprising Kankerm, but Gara wasn't phased. Kamatari, what's the problem? Gara asked with his monotone voice. It's Lady Tamari, she's been given a mission by Lady Hokage to back up the Sasuke retrieval team, and she needs you two to come with Tamari. What do you mean Sasuke retrieval team? Kanker masked. I'm not sure of the situation I was just given the information to come and get you two and reverse summon you back to Kanoha. Please hurry and get ready. Kamatari asked. Right. Both Gara and Kankram got ready, and after 30 minutes they were fully prepared after telling Baki the situation. Thus be safe you two. Baki said. Don't worry, it's those leaf brats you should worry about. We'll uphold the honor of the Sans Sensei. The older Sans sibling said. Baki nodded and Kamatari tried to reverse summon them all the way, 
but he could only manage to put them a few hours out of Kanoha. I'm sorry but this is the best I can do without consequences becoming relevant with the two of you. Kamatari apologized. It's okay, take this and tell Tamari we'll head east to Kanoha and for her to head west, we'll meet up and then head north after the group. Gara said handing Kamatari a small pouch of sand. Amatari River summoned himself back to Tamari and delivered the message. Tamari. Thank you Kamatari, I'll take that pouch. You're good to go, just remind me to give you some treats after this mission of over. Tamari said smiling at her summon. Of course Mladi. Kamatari said then poofed away. But that Tamari headed west to meet her brothers. It took six hours for the siblings to reach each other, and they turned north to follow after the retrieval group from the leaf. They were pushing themselves to catch up, mainly Tamari out of worry for Naruto's safety. With the retrieval group they were slowly making ground on Sasuke and the Sound 4, but they really made ground when the Sound 4 stopped for a break. This allowed the leaf to cover a good amount of ground. Before the leaf even left to chase after them the Sound 4 made Sasuke take a pill that was going to kill him as Jirobo put it. Sasuke was hesitant, but after a nudge in the right direction with some persuasion about the pill, granting him a second stage of his curse mark that would make him much stronger, he gobbled it down like a tic-tac. Afterward Sasuke's body exploded in purple and black flames, and the Sound 4 prepared to seal him into the coffin, where Sasuke would undergo his transformation over the next few hours. Once they got this done, they accidentally encountered a Jonin squad from the Leaf, and an unavoidable fight began between the two groups, and after 20 minutes of fighting and being forced to use the second stage of their curse marks, the Sound 4 won and moved out to try and keep their schedule of heading Sasuke to Urachimaru. After 40 minutes of traveling they were forced to stop since the toll of the battle was catching up to them and the adrenaline had completely worn off. Am, to think we were forced to use our second stage against some leaf scum, it's embarrassing. Taya spat. Relax Taya, it's not like they were weak, those were all Jonin, we're lucky we got out of that in the condition we're in. Seiken replied. Shut up Two-Face, I'm just saying it should have happened. She snapped back. Someone's here. Kidmeru said. Is the trap set? Seiken asked. Do you have to ask? The multi-armed shinobi replied. They soon got into position and waited to strike. Retrieval team. Make sure you watch where you're going, we haven't seen too many traps, and the ones we have seen have been set up pretty lazily. That's gotta mean we're getting close and they're resting. Shikamaru said. Got it. Choji said. Keep your eyes open Naruto. Shikamaru said. The hell you telling me for I know to keep my eyes open. He snapped back. Because you're the one who lets his emotions get the better of him when it comes to Sasuke, just stay focused and ready. The Nar replied. Yeah, yay he started before Shikamaru caught him with his shadow. That's exactly what I mean. He said. Nice catch. Naruto replied. Shikamaru pulled him back and they fell down while Niji checked the trap. Interesting. He said. What? Kiba asked. They set a double trap, well we've seen every trap and thought that they've been put up pretty lazy and rushed, they took the time to put down two trip wires. One that easily catches the sun's rays, and a second one that barely catches any close to the first. I see, the idea was that we see the first one, nullify the trap, and then when we move on, we trip the second one without realizing it. It seems like a paper bomb has been attached to it with a small delay, so when you ready a certain area of no return multiple paper bombs go off. Not bad, gotta give them some credit. Shikamaru said. Once they took care of the traps, they were ready to move on. Unfortunately they missed one that wasn't able to be seen, and the paper bombs went off. Thankfully Shikamaru caught it and was able to jump back, and everyone followed his lead, and they avoided and serious damage, with only some scratches and bruises from kicked up debris. When the dust settled the sound 4 was waiting for them, and all of them were smirking. This is the group they sent after us. They're just a bunch of snot-nosed brats. Taya called out. I want them, just go on ahead and I'll be right behind you. Jirobo said. You sure Jirobo? Seiken asked. Just give me a few minutes and I'll catch up. Jirobo said. No fuck that I want to beat these brats to a pulp. Taya snapped. Drop it Taya we still need to get back to Lord Orochimaru, let's go. Seiken said. But that the other three members of the Sound 4 left. All right now to take care of you brats. Jirobo said. Shikamaru you got a plan. Naruto whispered. Not really. I know nothing about his abilities. Shit. Naruto replied. Earth style barrier. Earth dome prison. Jirobo yelled and the earth from around them seemed to swallow them and create a dome. Good luck trying to get out of this one. Jirobo taunted. Damn it. Naruto yelled punching the wall, but to no avail. Stand back and let the real man handle the job. Kiba replied with a smirk on his face. Now hold on a second. Hang over Fang. 
Kibayeldas and Minakamari did their signature jutsu and left some dents in the wall as they bounced everywhere, but the dome didn't break. Am I thought we had it for sure. Kiba said. You idiot that's what I was trying to tell you. Shikamaru said. Tell me what. Kiba spat. Look, when Naruto punched the wall over here the dome seemed to heal itself very quickly. Shikamaru replied. So what? The Inuzuka said. You're such a dumbass, it's a drag. Let me dumb it down for you. This place is made of chakra, Niji can you confirm this for me? The Nara asked. Niji obliged and activated his Byakugan and saw the chakra network holding the rocks together and in place. Shikamaru is right, there's a complex chakra network holding the rocks together and in place. Kiba I want you and Akamaru to hit that side of the dome over there, Naruto hit the side opposite of Kiba, Choji, you and I will hit opposite sides of the wall from each other. The three looked at Shikamaru who nodded his head in agreement. While you guys do that, I'm going to pay attention to your impacts. Make sure you use a strong jutsu. Shikamaru said and prepared for what was to come. Rasengan. Fang over Fang. Partial expansion jutsu. 8 trigrams. 64 palms. The genin all yelled out and hit the dome and then stepped back to let Shikamaru observe everything. Exactly what I thought. Shikamaru said after a minute of looking thoroughly. Well. Naruto said. See this point where you hit Naruto? Yeah, it's all healed up. Exactly, now look at Kiba's. Kiba's point of impact was still there and the dome was slowly healing that portion. It's barely healing itself. Naruto said. Yeah, that is something of significance. Shikamaru replied. Yeah, because my technique is the strongest one obviously. Kiba replied. Idiot. It means that Jirobo is on the side that Naruto hit because of how quickly his mark healed. The dome is constantly sucking out our chakra to keep the dome intact. When we use techniques it uses the chakra from them to heal itself. The closer to Jirobo the point of impact is the faster it heals. The further away it is the longer it takes to heal. So we just need to keep hitting the side Kiba attack before we run out of chakra and we'll be free. So let's do it again, except everyone take turns aiming at the spot Kiba hit. Shikamaru said, and the four leaf genin nodded before repeating their attacks one at a time, with Choji delivering the final blow and breaking them out. Alright. Nice going Choji. Naruto exclaimed. Yeah, good job Chaji. Shikamaru complimented. Now that the group was free it became a five on one fight. Alright now that we're free we can easily take him on. Kiba said punching one fist. What about Sasuke? Naruto interjected. Naruto's right. I was hoping to keep the group together, but every second we waste they get further ahead. Unfortunately we'll have to split up. Now the hard part is to decide who should stay. Shikamaru said. I'll do it. Choji replied with a serious look on his face. Choji you sure? Naruto asked. Our mission is to get Sasuke and bring him home. If that means we need to split up and fight on our own then so be it. The others could feel the conviction and knew there was no way to convince the Akamichi heir otherwise. You better win. Naruto said before turning and taking off and the others left as well. After calming his nerves and looking at the enemy that towers in front, Choji was ready to have his first real fight that would ultimately mean life or death. This was his first real taste of being a shinobi. So you think your puny little ass is enough to take me on by yourself huh? Jirobo said. Toji didn't say anything he just waited for the fight to begin. You realize you're gonna die here right? So long as the mission gets done and we saw K back home where he belongs, I'll gladly give my life. He replied. HN, then get ready to die. Toji calmly took out a three cell container with different colored pills. Jirobo noticed this as he charged in but didn't bother to stop. Take whatever you want kid, I'll run you through. Jirobo thought as Choji popped the green spinach pill. All of a sudden Choji could feel the immense power rush through him and he sent a punch straight for Jirobo's gut and made perfect contact stopping the man in place. From there it became a battle of wills with both plus-sized shinobi having the veins in their heads protrude. Unfortunately for Jirobo Choji gained the upper hand was able to begin to push him back before gaining enough momentum to switch gears. He grabbed the Sound 4 member by his belt and with a great feat of strength, he lifted him off the ground and suplexed Jirobo head first into the ground. With the Sound Nin's head buried in the ground the rest of his body went limp. Breathing heavy and starting to feel the beginning effects Choji began to slowly walk away before he dropped to a knee and threw up from the sheer pain he felt in his abdomen. Not bad, that'll be the last shot you get on me. Choji heard from behind him as his eyes widened. No way. Choji whispered. Alright let's get this started then. Jirobo said popping his neck. Damn, I thought I finished you. Choji said getting up. Please, that little move isn't enough to kill me. Jirobo replied. Well then let's try this. Spiky human boulder. Choji yelled and he started to rotate incredibly fast with spikes protruding from him as he charged the Sound 4 member. 
Earth style. Terra shield. Jirobo yelled as he slammed his hands on the ground and a huge block of earth stood up like a wall and stopped Choji right in his tracks. Jirobo cocked his fist back and punched through the dirt wall and sent Choji flying back into a tree. If that's all you got then I don't need to even use my curse mark. Jirobo cockily said with a smirk. Then you might as well use that curse mark cause I'm not going down so easily. He said slowly getting back up and breathing heavily. You know what, I'll humor you. He said as he activated his first stage curse mark and rows of triangles spread across his body. Toji could feel the amount of power Jirobo was putting off and he knew this fight was long from being over. This is what you wanted kid, don't say I didn't warn you. Jirobo said. Jirobo began an onslaught punching Choji three times in the gut, knocking the wind out of him and making the Akimichi air fold over clutching his midsection and threw up some more. See brat. Only three punches and I've already made you double over and puke yourself. He yelled out as he kicks Choji for good measure in the face breaking his nose and sending him on his back. You're nothing but leaf trash. Jirobo said looking at the panting oversized shinobi. Choji slowly moved and pulled out the same container that had the green pill he ate. He popped open the middle slot containing a yellow colored pill. The yellow curry pill. Choji took it out and put the container away and got ready to pop it in his mouth. Another one of those damn things huh? Jirobo asked. Yup, so get ready to keep fighting. Choji said popping the pill and as soon as he swallowed visible chakra could be seen coming from Choji as the ground cracked and broke beneath him. The hell is this? It's just like the first pill he ate but more intense. Choji stood up and popped his neck before staring down Jirobo. Choji calmly breathed out and charged at Jirobo faster than he could process and he felt the back of his head grabbed and he soon found Choji's knee making a new home in his face. Jirobo stumbled back holding his nose and crying out. Son of a bitch. Jirobo looked at Choji with blood pouring out of his nose and was pissed off. I'll make certain you die. Bring it. Jirobo wiped the blood from his face and went right back at Choji. Shoulder charge. He yelled out as he slammed his shoulder into Choji, but he only slid back and wasn't that affected. Partial expansion jutsu. Choji yelled as he raised his knee up and slammed it into Jirobo's stomach, sending him flying up and knocking the wind out of his lungs. Toji jumped up past Jirobo and expanded his right arm, cocked it back and punched Jirobo square in the spine and made sure his arm kept expanding as he made sure his fists stay connected to his back and buried his in the ground, creating a small earthquake that the rest of the retrieval team and the Tsuna support team could feel the ground shake. Retrieval team. Ground shaking. The hell was that? Kiba asked. It came from the direction of Joji's fight. Niji said. Yeah. I'm sure he's fine. Keep going we've almost got up to them. Shikamaru said trying not to get distracted. He hated the fact that he left his best friend, but he knew he had two for the mission's sake. Soon a support team. What was that? Kanker masked. No clue. Tamari replied, but she was still focused on trying to get to Naruto. Let's just keep moving. Gara said in his monotone voice. Toji v Jirobo. Toji landed back on the ground and grabbed Jirobo out of the hole and punched Jirobo back into a tree. Toji then gave an onslaught of punches that kept slamming Jirobo through trees and created a path of destruction for a quarter mile before he gassed out and dropped to a knee, puking his guts out and rolling on his back, trying to catch his breath. Damn, I had no idea these pills would do this. Pa's gonna kill me when I get home. For five minutes Choji looked at the clouds passing and it reminded him of all the times he would watch the clouds with Shikamaru on the rooftops back home in Kanoha. Shikamaru would like these clouds today. Too bad we had to go on a mission. Toji was finally catching his breath when he felt Jirobo's chakra spike even more than it was earlier. Shit. I can't believe of all fucking people to make me go to my second stage it was a little snot-nosed brat from the leaf. Jirobo said as his orange hair grew into a mane and his skin turned red. The whites of his eyes became black and his ur eyes became gold. Jirobo came up to Choji and lifted him up by his neck and started at him in disgust. Slamming palm. He yelled out connecting with Choji's chin, sending him flying in the air and crashing back to the ground, and a bag of chips fell out from Choji and Jirobo noticed. You know I still need some chakra to keep up this form, so I think I'm just gonna take some from you. Jirobo said as he walked up to the bag of chips and picked them up as he began stealing Choji's chakra through the ground. Choji could feel himself getting weaker and couldn't understand why. Why why do I feel so weak? Like my energy is being sapped. I can't I can't move at all is is this what it's like to die? Damn, I can't believe I won't be able to try that brand new bag of chips. Choji thought as his vision slowly started turning to black. Hirobo opened the bag of chips and began to eat them and was talking to Choji while he ate them. You know, the reason your friends left you is because you're the weak link. They knew it would be better if they left you behind to die. 
Why do you think they didn't hesitate to leave your pathetic ass? Because they knew they had a better chance without you. They only picked you to join this stupid mission of yours because they felt guilty about leaving you out. You're nothing but trash in your group of so-called friends you fat piece of shit. Jirobo said as he got to the last ship. Well looky here, the last ship. I'm gonna enjoy this for sure. He said tilting his head back to drop the chip in his mouth, but before he could he heard a crunch and saw the container that originally had three colored pills was now empty. He saw Choji chewing the pill, and his eyes grew wide knowing exactly what he was chewing. Did I hear you correctly? Did you just say you were about to eat the last chip from my brand new bag? That's a brand new flavor that just got released, and I've been waiting to eat them. Choji said as he got up and Jirobo felt the biggest chakra spike he's felt in this fight. What the hell are those pills? Jirobo yelled. Joji's chakra was flowing so much that steam was coming off of him, and the charka made itself visible in the shape of butterfly wings. Jirobo ate the last chip, and Choji's wings grew and wind began picking up. I don't care that you made fun of me, I don't care that you called me fat, or that you even ate the last chip from a new bag of chips I was excited to eat, none of that matters. But don't you dare insult my friends. They didn't abandon me, they trusted me to win this fight and I'm going to. Hirobo tried to move into attack, but Choji easily dodged to the side and expanded his leg and swung his legs and kicked Jirobo in the face and sent him flying through more trees as a loud boom was heard from the connection of the attack. Best stop please. Jirobo begged I'm sorry. No, you had your chances and you blew it. Choji said coldly. He then channeled all of the chakra in his body to his left fist and prepared for the strongest attack he had. This attack right here is worth my whole life and it'll take yours. Choji punched Jirobo square in the chest creating a crater and crushing his heart at the same time. Butterfly bombing. Upon impact Jirobo died and then reverted back to his normal form. Choji's chakra disappeared and he fell to the ground with a smile on his face. I did it Shikamaru, I beat Jirobo. You don't have to worry anymore. Choji's eyes slowly closed and a smile was on his face as he saw a butterfly come and land on his hand. Retrieval team. The team had gotten caught in one of Kidmaru's traps, allowing the rest of the Sound 4 to continue their mission. The only exception to getting caught was Naruto thanks to his shadow clones, making it difficult on Kidmaru to track him down and restrain him. You little, hold still would ya? Kidmaru yelled as he kept shooting webs at Naruto to try and catch him, but it didn't work. Naruto kept moving around too much and using clones to evade the traps, and this gave Niji all the time in the world. As the young Haika prodigy was trapped in the webs he was panicking, but slowly calmed down to try and figure a way out to help Naruto, since he was definitely a mismatch for Kidmaru. Alright, just calm down and think. Focus on your chakra and figure out a way to get loose and help Naruto. Slowly his heart rate dropped, and he began focusing the way he needed to, and was able to break free from the web silently, and noticed that both Kiba and Shikamaru were still caught up in their own cocoons. He gave a silent and discreet signal to Naruto to let him know to keep it up while he got the others out, and Naruto did just that. He kept being a nuisance to Kidmaru's web attacks, and in no time Niji was able to free the rest of the team, and just in time too because Naruto's luck had run out at the moment. Kidmaru got a single thin strand of the webbing to connect with the outer wrist bone on Naruto's right arm and tugged at him to bring him in for the kill. Looks like you're finally at the end of your rope, kid. He yelled. Damn not like this. Naruto thought. Naruto. Niji yelled out as he cut the web and grabbed Naruto to bring him to the rest of the group. Their webs are chakra-based which makes them useless against my gentle fist to jutsu. Niji said standing with the team. Nice job Niji. Naruto said as he stood next to Niji and the four-leaf ninja plus Akamaru looked at Kidmaru. Alright, easy four on one, wouldn't you say Shikamaru? Kiba said punching one of his fists as Akamaru barked. No, it's up to Niji. I'm useless against his webs with my shadows, and I don't think either you or Naruto would be a good matchup. Niji's Tajutsu is the only one that can break these webs. Not even our kunai could cut through. If we stayed here to help Niji I think we'd only get in his way. As much as I'd hate to keep splitting us up, I think it's really the only way. The Nara Air replied. I'd have to agree with Shikamaru on this one. I can't focus on fighting him if you guys keep getting caught in his webs and can't get out. Just go on ahead of me. Choji will be coming up behind anyways to help so when he gets here, I'll be done and we'll catch up. Niji replied still looking at Kidmaru. Well if Niji says he can handle it then I believe him. Naruto said seriously. But Naruto no Kiba he's right. If Niji has made up his mind on staying to fight to let us continue the mission, then we need to respect his decision. If we didn't it would be an insult to him as a ninja. Shikamaru said. Niji you sure you got this? Shikamaru asked. Yes, I'll be right behind you. We'll get Sasuke back home. Niji said not looking at his captain. You heard him, let's move. Shikamaru said taking off with Kiba following right behind him. 
You better win Niji. I know you want a rematch. Naruto said before jumping away. Oh no you don't. Get back here. Kidmaru said shooting his webbing at the three ninja chasing after Sasuke. Niji was quick to intervene and break apart the webbing while landing on a branch. Your fight is with me not them. If you're so eager to get to them then you should have no problem getting through me, right? Niji asked. Seems like I have no choice. Kidmaru spat out. Kidmaru started off trying to end the fight quickly by creating multiple webs and shooting them at Niji. Because the attack was so widespread Niji wasn't able to cut through all of them or evade quick enough and got pinned to a tree. Easy enough. Kidmaru said and shot out a golden colored web that was hard, but Niji easily escaped in time and looked at Kidmaru before saying, easy enough. Niji then charged in getting close enough to land some hits before getting in his stance. You're in range gentle fist art. A trigram 64 palms. Niji yelled and connected with Kidmaru's body since he couldn't move from the yellow webbing coming directly from his mouth. Niji thought he connected every hit but was surprised to see the sound ninja still moving and he jumped back retreating into the forest to gather himself. This one doesn't seem to be a pushover like the rest of his group. I guess I'll have to take him seriously. Kidmaru used his harder webbing to create arrows and began shooting them at Niji. Even though they were fast, it would be impossible to make a hit with Niji's Byakugan active. Damn, not a single one is connecting, even the ones from what should be blind spots. It's like he can see 360 degrees. Time to kick it up a notch then. He said to himself as he activated his curse seal. The patterns on it were different than Jirobo's since these were more like vines that curled into itself. Summoning Jutsu. Kidmaru said as a huge black spider with two orange stripes appeared on the web above Niji. The huge spider then began birthing out babies the size of basketballs and dropping them on Niji. As they fell Niji knew he still had one trick up his sleeve that could help him out, something he hasn't shown yet. Rotation. He yelled and began releasing chakra from his body while rotating at an incredible speed to where the spiders just bounced off like nothing at first, but as more kept falling, they soon slowed down his rotation thanks to short strands of webs coming from the babies. Bam, they slowed my rotation. Niji thought. There. Kidmaru mentally yelled as he threw a kunai made from his gold webbing. At the last second Niji released some chakra from around his shoulder and it deflected the kunai away from him. Kidmaru wasn't having it though and released a barrage of the same kunai he had attached to webs and they launched themselves toward Niji who deflected some away before jumping away and contorting his body to narrowly avoid getting hit with one. Damn, it's like he doesn't have a blind spot, but that can't be it. Everyone has a blind spot and I'll find his. I just need to keep up my attack and wear him out, he'll eventually slip up enough for me to land a good hit. The summon kept birthing more babies than Niji could evade, so he resorted to using a higher form of his gentle fist, 128 palms. He yelled and began slaughtering all the spiders that were falling, but eventually it became too much, and as he tried to rotate there were too many and he couldn't move, and his right shoulder got sliced. Damn it, where did that come from? A trigram 64 pal arg. Niji screamed in agony as a kunai embedded itself in his back. Hidmeru began sickly laughing as he was finally making some headway on this fight. Now let's see how you handle more. Kidmaru yelled releasing even more kunai to the young Haikta. Niji was able to dodge them more the most part, but the band hold his hair got sliced, and two more kunai found a home in his back. At this point Niji was exhausted from using his gentle fist so much, but he still had a mission to do, he had a promise to keep to his comrades who trust him and consider him a friend, and most importantly he still had a rematch he so dearly wanted with Naruto. But that in mind Niji stood up not accepting defeat as an option. I won't go down, not until I've beaten you Kidmaru. He said as his knees were ready to give out at any second and he was visibly heaving for air. Damn it, I haven't felt this exhausted since my fight with Naruto back at the Chunin exams. Well kid you had a good run, but it's time to end this. Kidmaru thought to himself as he plucked a string a certain way that made his summon cry out from above Niji and it descended upon the young man and crushed him. It began crying out and Kidmaru didn't know why until he saw what looked like the end of impact points on his summon. Gentle fist. Niji said hitting the spider as hard as he could until it exploded into nothing but webs, and the first thing he saw was a bunch of Kidmaru's homemade kunai coming right for him. This time three more connected with his back leaving six sticking from his back. Seeing him get up again Kidmaru went ahead and advanced to his second stage curse mark. This kid is something else, he's turning out to be a lot more entertaining than I could have dreamed. I'll have to demonstrate my appreciation. Using his golden webs he created a bow and arrow that had an insane amount of tension behind it to where the veins in Kidmaru's arms were popping out. Now die. He yelled right after launching his arrow right towards Niji's blind spot and it impacted the ground so hard it created a crater and sent dust and debris back towards Kidmaru. 
Did Mare laugh thinking he finally got him since his third eyes that appeared on his forehead helps with aiming his arrows. The other noticeable changes were the two short horns coming from his forehead, his skin was now a little dark shade of brown than before, his hair was grayer and his teeth sharper, along with points coming from his elbow joints. Niji looked at the crater just able to avoid getting a killing blow by emanating enough chakra to throw it off go through his left shoulder, leaving a clean entrance and exit wound. Damn, just in time. I can't believe I was able to throw it off without even knowing where it was. Could he know my Byakugan's weakness? He whispered. No. How could I have missed? Niji didn't wait around for answers and began running, or rather staggering to get away while pulling the kunai from his back. This time Kidmaru made a gold arrow with normal web acting as a string attached to the back of it as he aimed the arrow to the prodigy. Gentle fist is useless if you can't get close to me, absolutely useless. He thought launching the arrow to Niji who was still running away as best as he could. Since this arrow had a string attached to it, Kidmaru was able to control where it was going and Niji tried to dodge by going around a tree, but the arrow went right through it and drew blood before slamming into the ground. Niji's headband got cut off his head and fell to the ground. When looking from the side all you saw is a string at Niji's head level, but looking head on you see that Niji escaped death by mere centimeters since he came away with only a cut left cheek. The thread Niji said as he collapsed and realized why he couldn't see it and that he got lucky with only a cut on his cheek. Hidmeru was extremely upset that even with a string he didn't kill the boy but wasn't panicking. He created a new arrow but made the tip a swirling head. This time, even if it hits a tree it'll slice right through it and find my target. 120% destructive power. Absolute maximum. He thought as he released his arrow and it traveled at incredible speeds that all Niji could do by the time it got within range was turn around and the arrow went clean through his guts. Through a tree and planted itself far enough that the force pulled Niji to the very tree it pierced and pinned him. Shit. I've still got one last thing I can do while I still have chakra flowing through my body. Gentle fist. He said as he grabbed a hold of the string that guided the arrow and he began letting his chakra flow through all the way back to Kidmeru. The idea worked perfectly as it was a clear path to his enemy and Kidmeru was paralyzed temporarily for taking in foreign chakra and began to fall from his spot. Once he got control of his head he bit through the web and prepared to finish the fight. Even with his internal organs severely damaged, he knew all he had to do was win the fight, get back to Lord Orochimaru, and then Kabuto could heal him up. A simple plan, but not every plan is flawless. Niji was thinking back to what Naruto had called him and what people called Naruto. They called the blonde a failure and screw up, but everyone praised Niji calling him a genius, even Naruto acknowledged that sentiment. But that resolve flowing through him Niji cut the string and began running. He should be on the floor bleeding out and dying. He shouldn't be running towards danger, but he was. Hidmeru was trying to retreat, but Niji found him and used his gentle fist to make direct contact with his face and sending the sound ninja to the ground, unable to mold chakra. But how, you should be dead with those injuries. My last arrow should have killed you instantly, how? I knew I couldn't completely evade it, so I deliberately prepared myself to take the hit. You're the strongest person I've ever fought. Not long ago the strongest person I fought at the time said something to me. You can do it too, cause unlike me you're not a failure. Those were his words and all this time I've been called a genius, so I can't lose. I can't let down those who believe in me. The weakest one in the game always goes down first. Isn't that what you said? Well look where we are now, fate isn't something for you to decide. He said hunching over as Kidmer was struggling to even sit up. Well you look like you're creeping on death's door too kid. Niji reached out for his headband and remembered what his father said to him when he was a child, that the bloodline of the Haika flows strongest within him. Maybe so, but I won't die as easily as this. Ahaha, <laughs> go ahead and try to stop it, but it's too late. Sasuke left to the sound village of his own free will. Sasuke is in the darkness. Niji thought to himself. You're wrong Kidmeru. He replied, there's one who can find him in the darkness and still save him from this path. He said thinking about Naruto. Haha, <laughs> no. Sasuke belongs to Lord Orochimaru now kid. I don't care who it is he can't save hi he will. Niji interjected which surprised Kidmaru a little. So calm and collected during our fight but just talking about this subject he seemed so passionate about his stance. He thought. Because Naruto, it was you who saved me from the darkness. Niji said as his fight back in the Chunin exams ran through his head. Niji looked up at the shining sun with a smile before throwing up and hunching back over. Still talking shit right to the end ha arg. Kidmeru said clutching his stomach with one of his six arms and rolling on his side. Kidmeru rolled on his back and realized he hadn't been pushed this far to his limit, not since Kamimro at least. But that Kidmeru passed away and Niji laid on the ground and the feather of a bird fell right into his palm. I leave it to you Naruto. Niji thought as he closed his eyes. With Jiraiya.
Gureya had heard from Tsunade about the mission to get back Sasuke and took off after Naruto in fear that this would be too great a challenge to face. I'm coming kid, just hang on. He thought as he came to some injured Jonin. You guys alright? What happened? He asked. We got ambushed by some sound ninja carrying a coffin of some sort. Thankfully Shizun was here and able to help patch us up. One of them said. Master Jureya is that you? Shizun asked. Yeah, Shizun, are you alright? He asked. Yes I'm fine, thank you. How come you're all the way out here? Naruto and some of the genin are chasing after Rachimaru's lackeys and Sasuke to bring him back. I'm going after them to make sure nothing happens to Naruto. I need you to come with me when you're done Shizun. He said. Then let's move, you two head back to the village and report to Lady Tsunade. She ordered. Yes ma'am. The other two said nodding their head and leaving for home. After a while they came to the fight scene for Choji and Jirobo and they checked Jirobo and saw that he was dead. Choji on the other hand was alive, but barely, he needed medical attention right away. Shizun do what you can on him right now and take him home. I'll send a message to Tsunade to prepare for emergency surgery and I'll make sure Chimza knows as well. Go. He ordered and she nodded as she quickly went to stabilize Choji as best as she could before she lifted him up and noticed how much skinnier he was, then took off for home. As he kept traveling to find anyone else he saw far off in the distance what looked to be birds fleeing and wondered just what or who was fighting over there. Not too long after that he came upon the final scene of Niji's fight with Kidmaru and just like before the genin took down a sound ninja. These kids are tough as hell but also still need more training. He thought. Summoning Jutsu. He yelled out and a purple with red accent around the eyes toad popped up. Jiraiya, long time. He greeted. Hey Gamagram, do you think you can carry Niji here back to Konoha and make sure you find Tsunade and let her know Niji is in the same condition as Choji and needs immediate medical attention? Don't worry about I got it boss. The toad said getting Niji loaded on his back and taking off. All right now to find out what the hell those birds were flying from. He said to himself as he once again took off. The sun was starting to move away from its apex position when Jureya found Tamari with Shikamaru staring at a dead girl with red hair and hundreds of trees cut at the trunks. Uh, someone want to explain to me what happened to the forest? Jureya asked. Ask Naruto's wife, she's the one who did this. Shikamaru replied gesturing to the blonde who had a grin on her face. Remind me to never piss you off. The Sanin said. Don't piss me off or this becomes your crotch. She said with a sickly smile. Yup, I'm good now. So you two okay then? He asked getting serious. Other than a broken finger I'm fine. Did you happen to pass by Choji and Niji? I figured they would have caught up by now. He said. I did. Jiraiya started before pausing and looking at the ground. You and Choji are close friends right? Same with you and Naruto isn't that right? He asked. Yeah, I'd say those two are my best friends. Shikamaru replied. Toji Akamichi is in critical condition. Seems like he took all three of the Akamichi color pills. And you know what it means when the red chili pill is consumed. Incredible power boost, but death is the drawback. Gureya said as Shikamaru's eyes grew wide thinking that he unintentionally sentenced his best friend to death. Relax Shikamaru, Shizun is on her back to Konoha and probably already made it and is working on him now. Same goes for Niji. I sent one of my toads with Niji on his back for emergency healing and possibly surgery. Where's everyone else? He continued. Fibba went down the cliff over there. Shikamaru replied. Anyone else went with him? The Sound 4 member did. Don't forget I'm not the only one who's here. Kankram went in his direction so he'll be fine. Tamari said. Well let's make sure and on the way you can tell me how you came away with only a broken finger Shikamaru. Jureya said as they took off and Shikamaru began retelling his side of the story. Flashback. Shikamaru and Naruto were now the only two left since Kiba fell down the cliff into a ravine with the last Sound 4 member. Sasuke has also broken out of the coffin he was in and immediately left for Orochimaru and Naruto wanted to desperately give chase but knew Shikamaru was going to need some help first before they could pursue. Naruto hold on. Shikamaru yelled. But Sasuke is getting away, we have to go after him. I get that but we still need to deal with her. He replied. Then what's the plan and make it quick, we're running out of time. The blonde impatiently replied. We need to create a diversion. She knows you're the powerhouse fighter, so what we need to do is throw her off. The Nara heir said quietly never taking his eyes off Taya. So what? You want me to pretend like I'm gonna attack her and then make a break for it? Yeah, just make it convincing. I'll go first and then you follow, got it? He asked. You sure you can handle her on your own? Naruto asked. Honestly I don't know. Together they're supposed to be on the level of Jonin, but apart from each other, they should be weaker in theory. I just hope I got a good matchup. 
Make sure you get Sasuke or else this whole thing will be for nothing. Shikamaru said. Don't worry about me Shikamaru, you have bigger problems. Naruto said. You ready? Oh yeah. Naruto replied with a grin. What the hell are they talking about, should I cast my Jinjutsu, or is this just part of their plan to get me to reveal myself? Damn that I hate this waiting game, but I've got no choice, I just need to stall some time for Sasuke to get to Lord Orochimaru. Fuck this whole thing. Aya thought to herself watching the two leaves come. She was taken out of her thoughts when Shikamaru charged in with a kunai and all she could do to react was put up her flute to block. Pretty sturdy instrument you got there. He quipped. Shut the hell up scum. Naruto now. Shikamaru yelled. Shadow clone jutsu. He yelled and 20 copies of him popped out from nowhere and they all charged Aya. some went high up in the trees, other went to the left or right, and some went down low to the ground, but once the real Naruto had made a clear past Aya, the others turned to the redeed. Smile then exploded into smoke. What the hell kind of bullshit attack was that? She yelled out and almost got caught in Shikamaru's shadow possession. Damn, almost had you there. What the fuck was that? She asked now getting some distance between herself and Shikamaru. The family jutsu, you wouldn't know of it so don't worry, a lot of people don't know it. He replied with a smirk. Oh I'm gonna enjoy tearing your ass to shreds kid. She gritted out while giving him a hateful look and clenching her jaw. Do you honestly think he can stop Sasuke, I mean come on, Sasuke left on his own choice, he was given Lord Orochimaru's latest curse mark and it now has the ability to be upgraded. He stands no chance. She said looking at the pineapple haired Chunin. Look at what remains of your team. You've sacrificed one member for every fight, every obstacle. You sound pretty stupid to me for a team leader. You're right, we have had to thin out our numbers and do one-on-one -on -one fights, I can't say with confidence whether I made the right decision or not, to be honest, this is my first mission as a platoon leader, so go ahead and mock me, but I trust my team to get the job done. And it doesn't matter what you say about Sasuke, he's one of us, and we'll die trying to get him back home where he belongs. Shikamaru replied. You talk big, but can you really back it up, just look at yourself, you're already tired form chasing and fighting to get out of Jirobo's prison. Why go this far for one person, why sacrifice your men for one measly guy who left on his own? Because I was told something once, by that blonde that passed you, Naruto. He told me something I'll never forget, it's a sentiment my team holds as well, in the ninja world, those who break the rules are scum, but those who would abandon even one of their friends are worse than scum. I don't know how you guys operate in the sound, but I prefer to not be worse than scum. Every one of us will fight till our last breath for someone who's been taken prisoner. DCH. Honestly I'm just a lazy cloud watching oaf who isn't cut out to be a leader or bark out orders to others, but there is one thing I done pretty damn well for my teammates, that believing them. I don't believe what I did was a sacrifice, I don't believe they're dead, so don't go around insulting people you don't know. He said. Have it your way Dumbus. Summoning Jutsu. Taya yelled and three ogres appeared behind her. Well shit, this can't be good. Shikamaru lazily said to himself. Just sit back and relax as I play a melody of death for you. Taya said putting the flute up to her lips and began playing a certain tune that instantly froze Shikamaru. So this is her melody of death. The ogres behind her began moving and moved in to attack at an incredible speed, forcing Shikamaru on the defensive immediately. So that's how she controls them huh? Before they weren't moving and then once she began playing her tune they took action. Damn it these guys are quick. He thought as he was forced back and couldn't an opening to counter. What the hell am I supposed to do? I can't get close to her to do my shadow possession because of that damn flute and I can't just stay here and wait to be picked off. The ogres didn't let Shikamaru think and forced him further back and he noticed her curse mark was now activated as jagged lines stretched across her face and body. This really isn't gonna be a cakewalk is it? He thought as the armless ogre and the one with long hair and a club came from above to attack. Aya kept playing her tune, and finally the last one moved in and seeming slashed Shikamaru dead, but it was just a substitution. Damn it, almost had him. Where are you there? She thought and sent the same ogre to attack Shikamaru who was camping in a cluster of leaves. Damn it, gotta move quick. He thought and barely avoided the attack and was kept moving. He didn't have enough time to do his clan jutsu and was now facing the three ogres. It's over scumbag, you're trapped like a rat with nowhere to run. Impressive, the attacks were so well coordinated and you had them positioned right where you wanted them. That's quite a tricky tune you got. Must have taken a lot of practice. Well at least you figured it out, but that doesn't mean you know how to stop it. Fair enough, I was never really musically inclined, just ask my parents. So she controls each movement of those ugly bastards with specific sound sequences. It doesn't matter if I analyze it if I can't come up with a counter, and the fact remains that I don't have an ear for music. Damn it. 
No one has ever heard this one and lived to tell the tale. Enjoy. Ninth passage. Demon revolution. She said and began playing a different tune. Am a different one. What the hell does this one do? The ogres all charged in with an all-out assault and the stitching on their mouths broke free and something began coming out of their mouths that had other mouths on them. What the hell is happening here? He asked himself as he tried to dodge them, but one got a bite of his hand and Shikamaru saw his chakra in the shape of his hand get a bite taken out of it. What the hell is that? He asked as he landed on a branch with his back to the chakra stealers. As they closed in he took out three shuriken and sent them towards each chakra stealer and they just went right through them. Gotcha. He thought as he jumped away and revealed a paper bomb stuck to the branch he was on and the explosion went off as they collided with the branch. The instant he sees my material ghosts about to attack he evades. Idiot is smarter than I thought. She smirked. Damn it, I'm almost out of paper and smoke bombs and it only resulted in me being able to hide. And those ghost things let my shuriken right through them. It's like their chakra itself, but they craved physical energy because they're mental energy and need my physical energy to stay stable. If I fight against them I won't be able to build chakra to fight. I have to leave those things alone and go after her, only problem is I can't get close enough without those things getting in the way. I guess I could capture those three with my shadows, but they never attack together and I'm screwed if I don't get all of them. She really hasn't given me any options for offense or defense. Heh, she must be one Huluva Shogi player. Chikamaru thought, let's see I've got 12 kunai, 9 shuriken, 36 feet of wire, 1 flash bomb and 1 paper bomb. Man it's really like playing shogi without any bishops or rooks. Oh well. He thought getting into his meditation pose to think of a plan. Aya was still playing her tune to keep her ogres ready, there's no use in hiding, and unless you can predict the tune, there's no way to stop them, and once I find you I'll break you like the twig you are. Alright, time to get the show on the road. Shikamaru thought opening his eyes ready to counterattack. Shikamaru had the kunai strung up on the wire and had the paper bomb ready. Well guess all I can do is get it over with. Nine moves, I have to win by then. He thought throwing the kunai with a paper bomb on it straight at a tree near Taiya. One. He thought before moving on as Taiya noticed the kunai and bomb. It set off like it should've, but she avoided the blast and landed on her feet still playing her flute. Shikamaru kept moving into position, he set another kunai with a flash bomb above her. Two. Taiya was scanning the area but couldn't find him. Three. He thought as he launched a kunai right for her, and she played a tune forcing the ogre with a two-pronged claw attached to its arm to block it. So you're right there, rookie mistake Dumbus. The armless ogre charged in but didn't find anything except for some wire wrapped around a small branch. 4. He thought sending another kunai to cut the wire, and it unleashed the tension in the branch, sending the attached kunai to swing down at the redeed. Cheap tricks like that won't work. She thought as the clawed ogre blocked it. 5, 6, 7, 8. He mentally counted as more kunai were launched, but the same ogre blocked them all. After a few seconds he threw another kunai at the string holding the flash bomb just before dropping down near Taiya, and she quickly reacted by sending all three ogres to him to finish this fight. The light bomb shit he's making shadows with the flash bomb. She thought. Shadow possession jutsu. He yelled and was able to get all three ogres shadows. Shadow possession jutsu, complete. But how? How could you predict my guy's movements? She asked, there's no way someone like you could hear the slight differences in my musical patterns. Exactly, I wasn't listening to the music. I was paying attention to something else crucial to their movement. He said as she looked down at her hands. Bingo, your fingers. That's impossible. There's no way. You extend your right index and ring finger, then you place the middle finger and pinky on your left hand the same way. That sound seems to make the crab man stand at the ready. When you press your right thumb and index finger and move your left index finger and pinky, it causes the big guy with the club to charge. Well you wasted time dodging and trying to find me I was observing each and every one of your finger moves and studying how it affected them. Analyzed and memorized. He said. Aya was pissed off at this greenhorn chunin and put her flute to her lips and began playing, but they wouldn't budge. Shikamaru had full control of them. But that Shikamaru began his counter-attack taking back one of the kunai from the crab-armed ogre. They charged in but immediately Taiya dispelled them and it was back to a one-on-one -on -one fight. Now it's my move you rat. She said and tried to move but found it impossible, what the hell is going on? Why can't I move? She yelled. Eh, shadow possession success. You bastard, you tricked me. You were never planning to use my ogres against me. Correct, you never attack on the first, always use that as a fake. He replied with a smirk. I have no choice. She thought as she upped her curse mark to stage 2 and her hair turned to a peach color, skin became brown and she now had horns coming out of her head. 
But the hell, her chakra just shot up out of nowhere, and she looks different too. Shikamaru thought as he began to realize the fight was just beginning. Aya was able to summon enough strength to slowly move her right arm with her flute. Damn, what the hell is happening? She's breaking free, if I use more chakra she'll just wear me out no, I can't worry about that right now. I have to use my other jutsu. He thought as he made the hand signs and said, ninja art. Shadow strangled jutsu. And a shadow-like hand began wrapping around her legs from the already connected shadow and began making its way up her body. Damn, that shadow is strangling my body like it's the real thing. She thought but was defiant in letting him have his way. I won't let you beat me. She said bringing the flute up to her mouth, forcing Shikamaru to grab the kunai and get ready. She's so strong, I don't how much longer I can hold her. He thought right before she began playing a tune again. Demon flute. Chains of Fantasia. Shikamaru was caught in the jinjutsu and was forced to release his own jutsu, giving Teaya control of her body again. He tried throwing the kunai at her, but missed, and his arms were stretched wide like he was on a cross. I can't move. Shikamaru thought as he saw his limbs being bound by some string and soon saw his arm melt off his body and let out a scream. Once in second state my flute can release all sorts of nasty jinjutsu, and this is especially appropriate for a rat like him, it paralyzes my prey like vermin. So how does it feel to be the one tied up huh? She asked as she grabbed the kunai he threw a minute ago. She jumped to the branch he was on, kunai in hand and kept talking. You said something about this being your final move right? Too bad for you it's checkmate. She said getting ready to stab him, but he put a solid punch right to her gut, shocking her to the core. But how did you? He broke his own finger with his shadow. The pain must have broken the jinjutsu. He was faking. She tried going in again, but the same shadow hand caught her and stopped her from moving. Didn't I already tell you, the first attack is always the fake. It's basic strategy, the second one always wins the match. You may notice my second move looks a little different from before. He said and she noticed it. He used the same shadow strangle, but this time the distance was up close and personal make his hold much stronger than before when they were separated. Damn you, I got careless and came too close. She said. Wrong, remember when you said your flute was your only weapon? He asked and she had a realization. My last kunai throw was a miss on purpose, I was never aiming for you at all. I knew that you had no other weapon and would pick it up and come close to me. He explained with a smirk. The fight for control continued as they struggled against each other. Shikamaru back off for a second to come in with another punch to the gut, but somehow Teaya managed to move her left hand to block it and grab a hold of his fist. You may have escaped my jinjutsu but don't get ahead of yourself. She said. Damn, she isn't immobilized yet, gotta finish this quickly and make it count. He thought as he sent a shadow hand to her neck to choke her to death. The hand got to her throat and she slumped over his shoulder, making him think he won, but soon found that she was resisting even more, causing her horns to grow out as she struggled and was able to force the hand off her throat. It was a struggle of wills and chakra to see who'd win, Teaya was getting the upper hand, though forcing the shadow off her upper body before Shikamaru would get it back up to her throat and then it would back off again. A continuous cycle of pushing against each other. Bam, I'm at my limit. This is like that time with Asuma, but the chances of someone stepping in is almost zero. And I can't come up with anything. Shit I can't hold on any longer. He thought as he dropped the jutsu and she was free again. Finally. You're mine. She yelled but was blown away but a huge gust. Having trouble are we Shikamaru? Tamari asked from a branch smirking at him. Who the hell are you? Tei asked trying to hold onto the trunk of a tree. Allies of the leaf village, we're shinobi of the sand. She said still smirking. Tamari what the hell are you doing here? Shouldn't you be back home in the leaf? Shikamaru asked in shock. I was but Lady Tsuna Day called for a meeting with me and wanted myself and my brother to come back you guys up as quickly as we could, and here I am. Kankram is helping out one of your other teammates, while Gara goes after Naruto to back him up. She replied. Ah I see. Well it's a good thing Lady Tsuna Day was cautious and sent you guys or I'd be dead right now, so thanks. He said getting up and standing tall again. So you gonna give up again? I don't mind taking care of business by myself. I'm not some dainty lady afraid to break a nail or get dirty, so if you want just sit back and let me go to work, or are you gonna man up and fight? She asked mockingly. I'm not about to give up, and I don't care if you're not afraid to get down and dirty any real man doesn't let a woman do the fighting for him. He quickly replied. Damari walked up further to confront Teaya, while opening up her fan to her third moon and getting ready. So you guys are with the leaf now? How you dumbasses are all over the place aren't you? Aya said and got ready to perform her jinjutsu, but Shikamaru was quick to inform Tamari who was ready for a counter-attack. Watch out. When she plays her flute it emits a jinjutsu. Oh really? Well then if that's her trick then I'll finish this in one shot. 
Let's see your sound waves get through this. Summoning. Blade dance. She yelled and Kamatari popped out riding his sickle, and the current of wind tore up the surround area. Once full-grown trees were now cut into oversized logs, and Teaya got caught underneath one crushed by the weight and died on impact. She reverted back to her normal self, but her time was up. How's that? Tamari asked smirking at her work. Incredible, I had no idea Tamari had this kind of power. Why didn't she use it against me in our fight? He thought to himself. Remind me to never piss you off. He said looking out at the shaved forest. Don't piss me off. She said looking back with a toothy grin. You've got your hands full for sure Naruto. Good luck to you on that. He thought. After taking a breather Jiraiya caught up to them and saw the deforestation. Flashback end. The three finally found Kiba, Akamaru and Kankram together with Leaf and Ninkin, looking like they've seen better days. You two alright? Jiraiya asked checking them out. I'm alright, just got stabbed is all. Akamaru is the one who's really hurt. Kiba said clutching the wound over his liver. Kiba your liver got stabbed. You're definitely not alright. Shikamaru exclaimed. Well, the job isn't over yet, we still need to back up Naruto. He said trying to get up but dropping back on his ass. Just stay down idiot, Gara went to help Naruto. If we go after him right now to try and back up that fight, we'd only get in Gara's way. Kankram replied. W wait, G Gara is here too Kiba fearfully asked remembering the last encounter with the Redeed. Don't worry he's changed, thanks to Naruto that is. He isn't the same psychopathic killer he used to be. Kankram said, but it did nothing to comfort the Inuzuka. I'll believe it when I see it. He quietly said. So you good enough to travel kid? Jiraiya asked. Honestly no I need to get Akamaru checked out. My sister will know what to do. Kiba replied to the Sanin. Well if that's the case then Kankram is it? Jiraiya asked. That's me. I want you to take him home, make sure his clan attends to his Ninkin, and then take him to the hospital. Make sure you see Lady Tsunade or her assistant Shizun, got it? He asked. Yeah, it's gonna take me a while to get there, but I'll do what I can. The warpented shinobi replied. Nonsense. I'll lend you one of my summons, they'll take you back to the leaf and make sure you see Tsunade. Summoning Jutsu. Jiraiya said and out of the smoke appeared Gamakin, one of Jiraiya's bigger summons. Hmm, Jiraiya. What's going on? He asked. Hey Gamakin, I need you to run these guys back home to the leaf and make sure they see Lady Tsunade or Shizun alright. Jiraiya replied. Sounds easy enough. Gamakin said lowering himself to allow the two humans and one dog to board. One has a stab wound to the liver, so be careful alright. Jiraiya said. Got it, you focus on what you're doing and I'll take care of this. Gamakin said before leaping away and doing his best to not be ungraceful or clumsy. Alright so next stop is to chase after Naruto and Sasuke right? Jiraiya asked. Not quite, I didn't mention one detail. When Naruto and I got the coffin back some other guy that Teaya recognized swooped in out of nowhere and took the coffin with him. Naruto is giving chase to him right now, and I can tell you this, he's stronger than all the Sound 4 members put together. Naruto has a tough fight ahead of him. Shikamaru said. Then all the more reason to get moving. Jiraiya said. Right. Shikamaru replied popping his finger back in place. Without them knowing Rock Lee was already on his way to assist Naruto however he could. He passed Jiraiya's group a while ago since they got off the direct path and Lee stayed right on course the whole time. He would be that backup that they need but don't realize just yet. Thanks for watching guys, I hope did you enjoy this video, if you do please leave a like, share and subscribe, also don't forget to drink water, take care bye.